what last two years, Mountain Church, where were you guys with people, anti-vaxxers, vaxxers, close the church, keep it open? Where were you at with that? Well, you know, we saw, we saw I, I have the ability to kind of um, stay connected to a lot of pastors. So I had a lot of connection with pastors all over the country of, of, of the United States primarily. And I saw big differences between the way pastors and churches dealt with this. And so the churches that were in blue states, the churches that were in metro areas, the churches that were larger, and the churches that were more diverse, those four factors all dealt more slowly and cautiously with vaccinations and masks and, and all things related well, to this than those that were smaller, more rural or Midwest, not in a big city and in a red state. So you're talking to a pastor who's down in, you know, the wild, wild west of Arizona. They're like, what pandemic? You know, we're just <laughs> open, you know, and pandemic's pandemic, right? So, but we we had to be very respectful of the people that, that, uh, we we have and and where we are so for us it hit us you know we, we we had a long period of time where the right thing for us to do was to um abide by the government regulations and to not meet and then when we gathered we had masks for a while and those kinds of things we just tried very hard i think god prepared us ahead of time by we were anticipating the election and we had prepared a series of messages on on how everyone's always so politicked off, you know, and um, how can <laughs> that's, how, a, that's how, a Greek word, politicked yeah. off? <laughs> how do Christians respond in this age of rage that everyone's all upset about? And we had talked about some of these things ahead of time, which I think really helped us. But we just tried to say, you have two choices. You can you can go and just storm out. And go say, I'm going to go be with people that think like I do. And that's what a lot of Americans did. A lot of Christians did that in Nazareth. They went and said, I'm going to go to a church that agrees with me on masks. I'm going to go to a church that agrees with me on vaxxers. I'm going to go to a church that said what I wanted them to say or what I didn't want them to say. You know, it did what I wanted them to do with relationship to the racial tensions. I'm going to have the one that handled the election the way I want. I'm going to go. So we saw, I'll use the word homogenization where things went into little pockets of sameness, little bubbles of uniformity. We got more, we saw churches that bridged large gaps before the pandemic fall apart. And now they're little echo chambers of the same kind of people because and I'm, I'm, this is probably hard for someone to hear and they may not agree with me, but I, I, think I'm, I think I'm right here that we saw a lot of people just say, I'm gonna go settle with those that think like me and are mm. like me and agree with me it's more comfortable and i just think we lose something beautiful out of the church when we're not willing to say the thing that brings us together is not our ethnicity and it is not our politics it is not who we voted for it is not how much money we make or what our skin color is mm -hmm. the thing that brings us together is jesus and that's enough and i think that i I'm, i fear that fewer churches are willing to go there because if I could get some people as excited about Jesus as they are about their politics, sometimes we'd have a revival on our hands. Yeah. Without, uh, without preach, yeah. Right. So I'm just yeah, saying was, what we tried to do is be gracious. We had to choose some posture at some point to say, this is what we're going to do right now. But we tried to say, we need to understand that not everyone's going to agree with this. It's going to be difficult for us. We need to have, you know, you need to be a pastor instead of a autocrat instead of a politician sometimes. And, and so we tried to be a pastor and say, we need to try to understand where each other is. And um, this is what we're going to do for now. And, and um, let's all hang together and be patient because this isn't going to last forever. And Jesus is on the throne and he's calling us together. So we just talked unity. We talked um, the commitment to behave with civility and the, yeah. to, to have some humility, to strive for unity and don't forget your identity, who you are. You're a child of God. And then you can be known for charity, which is a fancy word for love. And those those hallmarks, they go a long way. And um, that's how we got through it. And we are rocking and rolling right now. We're on the other side of this. And there's a few people that we don't know where they are. <clears throat> Maybe they're coming back. <laughs> we got a bunch of new people. I can tell you where they are. Yeah. You yeah know, they're watching, on your they're watching online where they are. Yeah. 